There is a balm that can heal every facet of life. Reveal God's mind concerning your life. A balm for the hopeless, fatherless, defenseless, and the afflicted. A healing balm from Healing Room. A time of teaching, prophetic, and healing every sick part of life. Healing Room on air and online. Coming soon. There is a balm that can heal every facet of life. Reveal God's mind concerning your life. A balm for the hopeless, fatherless, defenseless, and the afflicted. A healing balm from Healing Room. A time of teaching, prophetic, and healing every sick part of life. Healing Room, on air and online, coming soon. politician came to me and said, Man of God, I need your direction for where I'm supposed to be in terms of my political ambition. God visited him and today he's one of the great people in our land. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why are my people still not well? A young lady who had an issue with the heart came to me and said, Man of God, I need healing for my heart. By the grace of God, even though doctors had recommended surgery, God touched her and today she is well. By his strength, we are already healed. How then are we able to tap into the healing that God has already given unto us? In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that God also gives gifts of healing to his people. So there is gifts, not gifts as in singular, it is plural, indicating that God has different kinds of healing for his people. Healing room is not just about physical healing, but it's about spiritual healing, emotional healing, relationship healing, marriage healing, political healing, leadership healing, business healing, anything you can think about. I want you, especially you, to join me this and every week for Healing Room TV coming your way and I believe that God will surely bless you. There is a balm for you and make sure you don't miss this balm. There is a balm that can heal every facet of life. Reveal God's mind concerning your life. A balm for the hopeless, fatherless, defenseless, and the afflicted. A healing balm from Healing Room. A time of teaching, prophetic, and healing every sick part of life. Healing Room, on air and online, coming soon. There is a balm that can heal every facet of life. Reveal God's mind concerning your life. A balm for the hopeless, fatherless, defenseless, and the afflicted. A healing balm from Healing Room. A time of teaching, prophetic, and healing every sick part of life. Healing Room, on air and online, coming soon. There is a balm that can heal every facet of life. Reveal God's mind concerning your life. A balm for the hopeless, fatherless, defenseless, and the afflicted. A healing balm from Healing Room. A time of teaching, prophetic, and healing every sick part of life. Healing Room, on air and online, coming soon. There is a balm that can heal every facet of life. Reveal God's mind concerning your life. A balm for the hopeless, fatherless, 
defenseless and they are afflicted. A healing bar from Healing Room. A time of teaching, prophetic and healing every sick part of life. Healing Room on air and online. Coming soon. There is a balm that can heal every facet of life. Reveal God's mind concerning your life. A balm for the hopeless, fatherless, defenseless, and the afflicted. A healing balm from Healing Room. A time of teaching, prophetic, and healing every sick part of life. Healing Room, on air and online, coming soon. I remember a young politician came to me and said, Man of God, I need your direction for where I'm supposed to be in terms of my political ambition. God visited him and today he's one of the great people in our land. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why are my people still not well? A young lady who had an issue with the heart came to me and said, Man of God, I need healing for my heart. By the grace of God, even though doctors had recommended surgery, God touched her and today she is well. By his strength, we are already healed. How then are we able to tap into the healing that God has already given unto us? In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that God also gives gifts of healing to his people. So there is gifts, not gifts, as in singular, it is plural, indicating that God has different kinds of healing for his people. Healing room is not just about physical healing, but it's about spiritual healing, emotional healing, relationship healing, marriage healing, political healing, leadership healing, business healing, anything you can think about. I want you, especially you, to join me this and every week for Healing Room TV coming your way, and I believe that God will surely bless you. There is a balm for you, and make sure you don't miss this balm. There is a balm that can heal every facet of life. Reveal God's mind concerning your life. A balm for the hopeless, fatherless, defenseless, and the afflicted. A healing balm from Healing Room. A time of teaching, prophetic, and healing every sick part of life. Healing Room, on air and online, coming soon. I remember a young politician came to me and said, Man of God, I need your direction for where I'm supposed to be in terms of my political ambition. God visited him and today he's one of the great people in our land. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why are my people still not well? A young lady who had an issue with the heart came to me and said, Man of God, I need healing for my heart. By the grace of God, even though doctors had recommended surgery, God touched her and today she is well. By his strength, we are already healed. How then are we able to tap into the healing that God has already given unto us? In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that God also gives gifts of healing to his people. So there is gifts, not gifts, as in singular, it is plural, indicating that God has different kinds of healing for his people. Healing room is not just about physical healing, but it's about spiritual healing, emotional healing, relationship healing, marriage healing, political healing, leadership healing, business healing, anything you can think about. I want you, especially you, to join me this and every week for Healing Room TV coming your way, and I believe that God will surely bless you. There is a balm for you, and make sure you don't miss this balm.
le pala bala bahaya le mala bala basanda la bale makada busa mala badosa mahayande le balonda mariande makada busa in the name of jesus in the name of jesus heavenly father we thank you this evening we are grateful unto you for your love You are awesome. You are mighty. Tonight is another night of encounter. Let your power, let your presence take preeminence tonight. Let Jesus be glorified in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Wow. If you just tune in, my name is Emmanuel Lotredako, and I welcome you to Healing Room. Today is the final episode on the prophetic series. Amen. Wow, powerful. You know, um, the prophetic. Are we ready for the prophetic? <laughs> Are we ready for the prophetic tonight? All right. Uh, the prophetic is something I find it a bit difficult to teach because a lot of people prophesy when it comes to Africa, Ghana has a lot of prophets more than every other country. And when you go to any prophetic meeting, the best they do is to prophesy to you. But to teach you what goes into seeing, what goes into hearing yourself, what goes into the prophetic, that is not done. And so I'm trying my best that in this meeting, I teach you how to see into the spirit. Hallelujah. Are we ready for that? Teach you how to see into the spirit, how to hear into the spirit for yourself. So that at any point in time, you will be able to buy into the mind of God and see into the things the Lord is doing. Amen. Amen. Let's read a quick scripture from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, verse 9. 2 Kings, chapter 2, verse 9. Amen. Wow. So, Elisha said, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Amen. And if you look at what Elisha said, you realize that the double portion was an impossible thing. The double portion was not possible for Elisha to receive. This is because a man cannot give a double of his spirit. Every man has one spirit. The human body is made up of three things. The soul, the spirit, and the body. And so if a man tells you that give me a double portion of your spirit, it's impossible. Because you can only give one, your spirit, to the person. So when Elisha said, give me a double portion, he was not referring to a double portion actually. There were two things he was referring to. He was referring to the spirit of Elijah. And if you look at the scripture very well, that spirit starts with the letter, small letter S. 
meaning that it was not the Holy Spirit as in God. So the letter S, small letter S, means that he was talking about the spirit of the prophet, of Elijah, to come upon him. And then number two, what is the other portion? He was also referring to the unction from above. So when you say double portion, I hear people say the letter double portion of your spirit. No, 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 no. You, a double portion, a man cannot give you double portion. Are we together? A man cannot give you double portion. At best, he can give you his spirit. But you see, for a man to give you his spirit, a man's spirit is not imparted. It comes with time. When you have associated with the person for a long time, then the spirit of the person enters into you. So you realize that when Elisha walked with Elijah and they went to a certain realm, now he said, if only you will see me go, then you will have it. In other words, for me, you have my spirit. But the other side, which makes it double, will only come when you see me leave the natural. And the Bible said that, thankfully, Elisha saw it. And then the mantle came upon him. So that is what we mean by the double portion. You see, when we, come, when we talk about the prophetic, there are two things. One, God is a speaking God. God is a speaking God. We serve a God who speaks. And number two, God is doing a lot of things. He's a doing God. And anytime somebody is speaking, we need somebody around who will pay attention to what God is saying. And when God is also doing something, we need somebody around who will observe, pay attention to what God is doing. That is the essence of the prophetic. And so, let me just show you something quick. God is a speaking God. God is a doing God. God speaks, and then he's always doing something. For we to be able to know what God is saying, we need to have an ability to hear. And for we to see into the things the Lord is doing, we also need an ability to see what God is doing. So it means that for you to hear what God is speaking, you, have, you need the ability of hearing. Am I pushing it? <laughs> and then for you to also see what God is doing, you need an ability we call seeing. Don't mind my handwriting. <laughs> So, if God is saying something, if God is saying something, you need an ability we call the hearing ability. If God is also doing something in your life, in the life of a person, in the life of a group of people, in the life of a family, we need an ability we call the seeing ability. Are we together? So, if a man is able to hear, is a man, if a man is able to hear, then that man will be able to know what God is saying. If a man is able to see what God is doing, then that man is in the right place, is in the right prophetic place. And this has become one of the biggest problems for most Christians. Because we serve God, we are Christians, we do all that, but at the end of the day, we don't have that ability to hear God for ourselves and to see what God is doing at any point in time. And that is the essence of the prophetic. And so today, I want to show you how to hear. <laughs> oh, my love, Shia. And I want to show you how to also see into the Spirit. Can I do that? All right. So over the weeks, I've been talking about prophecy. I've been talking about how prophecy works and all that. And let me just show you something. The first time the word prophet was mentioned in the Bible was Genesis chapter 20, verse 7 and 8. And when Abimelech the king had seized the wife of Abraham, Sarah, and the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, My friend, you are a dead man. 
the man you have taken the wife from is a prophet. Return his wife to him, and he shall pray for you, and you will live. So then, God is the first person to mention the word prophet in the Bible. And that word, you know the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and Aramaic, not Arabic. Aramaic is different from Arabic. So the Old Testament was written in Aramaic and Hebrew. Now, if you look at the Hebrew word for prophet, that word that God used for Abraham is this. Nabi. And Nabi means one who hears and speaks. So you realize that there's, no, but there's nowhere in scripture where it was written that Abraham was mentioning people's names. <laughs> Abraham was giving people's telephone numbers and I mean there was no telephone there but <laughs> there was nowhere written in scripture we say Abraham was telling people that you live such and such a place uh, I know all that known. But we know that Abraham was always hearing God's voice. God would speak to him and he would move. God would tell him something and then he would take an action. He had an ability to hear and to speak. And that is what we call a Nabi. So a Nabi prophet is one who has the ability to hear God's voice and to speak it forth. That is a Nabi prophet. Are we together? And now we have another word for prophet called the Kose. Or the Ra, which has to do with sight or to see. So the Kose has to do with this kind of prophet who always sees the word of God. So it means that the word of God can be heard and can be seen. You either hear the word or you see the word. Are we together? You hear the word or you see the word. Now, Kose refers to that one who has the ability to see. In other words, this person does not really necessarily hear, but he has the ability to see the word of God. He sees them in dreams. He sees them in visions, open visions. And that person is called a koze or a ra prophet. A lot of times, we term them as seers. A lot of times we term them as seers because they have ability to see. So, for example, we are in the Afcon season, am I right? So two years ago, the Lord appeared to me in my dream and said, Ghana, the Black Stars will have a match with Congo. And when the match is going on, 27, am I right? 27 minutes, on the 63rd minute, Black Stars will score a goal. And I was watching the match myself. And as I was watching, in fact, spiritually, this was a dream. I wasn't awake. But God could tell me the exact second, exact minute that a team will score a goal. And this was in a dream. And that is, what, that is this dimension, Kose, or the Ra dimension. There are also, also some other prophets who don't only hear or see, but they do both. I mean, as you grow in the gift, there comes a time you have the ability to both hear and to see. And I pray that this grace will come upon somebody. I pray that this anointing will hit somebody's life. I pray that this unction will fall upon somebody. May you hear, may, may somebody shout a believing amen in the house. This is amazing to hear and to see. But you see, how do you hear? If you read the book of Revelation, the Bible said, and John, John said, I was in the spirit on the last day. If you read the book of Revelation, you realize that the Lord took John and began to show him big things and great things. And the guy could see a lot of things about the future. But the secret to seeing 
and hearing. Don't miss this one. If you miss it, you've missed everything. <laughs> the secret to seeing and hearing is to be in the Spirit. John said, I was in the Spirit on the last day, and the Lord. So, how do you see? You see when you are in the Spirit. How do you know that you are in the Spirit? I will go there. But before I get there, I want to lay this foundation. That before you say that you have an ability to see or to hear, you must be in the spirit. So anyone who walks in the flesh cannot see. You cannot see, you cannot hear. If you are in the spirit and you see and you hear and you begin to walk in the flesh, it's just like an iron that has been plugged in the socket. When you unplug it, the iron will still be hot. But with time, it will be cold. So people will see you, oh, this man of God, he does all kinds of things. People don't see. But at the end of the day, with time, your unction will, will disappear. So to be in the spirit, let me just show you that, then I'll come back. Galatians chapter 5 says that, but the fruit of the spirit is love. You know, it says the fruit of the Spirit, as in one, not plural. So it means that the fruit he was going to mention is just one fruit. Are we together? The fruit of the Spirit, this is English. Are we, are, are we together? <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Now, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, blah, 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 blah. All these things are seeds of love. So, the fruit of the Spirit is actually one. It's love. Calm down. The fruit, the fruit of the Spirit is love. It's love. It's what? Love. And so anybody who walks in love is already walking in the Spirit. It is so easy to walk in the Spirit. As a matter of fact, every average Christian thinks that when he encounters the supernatural, they become so surprised. A natural man encounters the supernatural and he becomes surprised. But a supernatural man, when he encounters the natural, he also becomes surprised. That is why, I mean, this is averagely. So a Christian begins to see things like one day you are there and the God opens your eyes like that. And you begin to see 70 years ahead. God gives you telephone numbers. He gives you names. He gives you all kinds of things. And he shows you things which are yet to happen. You'll be so amazed. Hey, me too. Or one day, you are passing by somebody. And the Lord will open your ears audibly and say that, that guy going, his name is called Michael. He comes from so-so and so a place. He lives in a town called this. His mother is called Efia Kunedu. His father is called Asare Trenebua. And they live in a house which is painted uh, cream. And then they have a brown paint underground. And then God gives you all these details. You'll be amazed because you live in the natural. But when a man lives in the supernatural, the day he starts manifesting natural things, tendencies, he becomes so surprised. How can I suddenly, it's as if I'm becoming so fleshy and I'm becoming so carnal. You become surprised. So when you walk in love, you are walking in the spirit. It's so easy, huh? Can I, am I talking to somebody? When you walk in love, you are walking in the spirit. God is love. God is not wisdom. God is not power. God is not beautiful. God is not uh, all the things we can say. God is love. Love is God. So when you are walking in love, it is like you are operating in the class of God. That is why any man who wants to walk in deep realms of the prophetic must operate or walk in love. Check every genuine prophet of God or prophetic verse. They have unconditional love for people. They just love people. They don't pretend. They are whom they are and they love everybody for whom they are. You offend them, they forgive you. Because they don't have a heart to harbor bitterness and to think about unnecessary things. We want to love so that we can walk in the class of God. So when you walk in love, you are walking in God's class. 
And anybody who works in God's class, you hear God. Seeing is not a struggle. And I see people here watching us. You are going to walk in this deeper dimension as never before. Oh, as I minister to you, that grace is coming upon you. That anointing is coming upon your life. So, listen. God is saying something. God is doing something. But he needs people who will observe and see what he's doing. And he needs people who also pay attention and listen or hear what he's saying. So, he speaks. He does something. And we have these two streams of the prophet. Now, listen. Amos says something in Amos 3.7. He says that, surely, the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Please, come home and let me show you something. God will do something. But before God will do anything, he reveals his secrets. Listen. So, even though God will say something and God will do something, before he actually does anything, he has to first speak. That is why I came to announce to you that if, even if you can see and you can hear, it is enough. If you can see, I mean, by the grace of God, I've worked in certain dimensions of the prophetic, I was shocked. There was a day the Lord showed me that as you go to church, a certain woman will come to church. He's going, she's going to dress in a white apparel, top to down. And when she comes to church, she will, she's going to have a hedgy of white. She will sit at the far back to the left side. And so, so, and so, this is the issues that she's going through. And so, you need to pray for her and minister to her. So, when I went to church, I began to scout. Then I started scouting and scouting. And then, lo and behold, I saw this woman at my left-hand side. And then, she was dressed in the exact dressing the Lord showed me. I ministered to her. It was awesome. One day in church, a couple had given birth to a baby on the 14th of April. And then I said, is there anybody here who has a baby on the 14th? Everybody's hand was down. I said, ah, you, get up. Didn't you give birth to your baby on the 14th of April? They said, yeah. Why are you sitting down? Then they got up and I said, listen, even though you have lost the baby, the Lord is saying he is going to give you a double for what you lost. So this came by sight. But there are some of us we may not necessarily see, but you can hear the word. You can actually hear. And listen, when it comes to hearing, there are about three ways of hearing. We have what we call the audible hearing, where you hear the voice as if a man is talking to you, just like you hear my voice. And the first time I heard the audible voice was in St. Augustine's College. I was walking on the campus. I was in the classroom. Sorry. And then all of a sudden, somebody... God <laughs> behind me spoke to me and said, Emmanuel, God knows your name. I said, God knows your name. He said, Emmanuel, read, pick your Bible, read Revelation chapter 2, verse 2 to 4. And that scripture talks about remember your first love. Charlie, I was becoming stubborn. <laughs> he said, remember your first love. And I had to, I mean, I turned to see who was behind me speaking to me. And when I turned, there was nobody behind me. Then I knew that this can only be God. The audible voice. We also have another way you hear where there is this kind of inner peace. You hear by intuition. So sometimes you are going to do a business and you don't feel at peace. You are going to marry a certain young man and you don't feel at peace accepting his proposal. There's this strange thing, in, intuition you have. That is also hearing. But people want to always hear audibly before they say God is speaking. That is not all. So sometimes the intuition is one of the channels God used to speak to us. Then we also have another way of hearing where you will sense. This one is not intuition, but you sense. It comes just by a knowing you don't understand. You just know. You didn't hear, but you just know. So, for example, one day, I mean, even today, <laughs> I was going to buy, I mean, some cart somewhere. And I just knew that I have to buy a certain number or a certain quantity. 
I just knew. If you ask me how did you know, I didn't hear, I didn't see, but I just know. We call it sensing. So you sensed it. So there comes a time you will sense. There comes a time you have an intuition. There comes a time you hear audible voice. These are all ways we hear. And as I minister to you, your hearing ability is expounding, is multiplying exponentially. God is giving you grace to hear and to see. Amen in the house. Before God will do anything, he has to first say. So God will act. God will give you a job. God will give you a business. God will make you that international person. But before God will do it, he has to first say it. But the greatest problem is when God, you are praying to God that God, you want to hear God about something. Okay? And what you are praying about, God has already answered it. You didn't hear me. God speaks. But God has spoken. God is speaking. And God will speak. Are we together? God has spoken. God is speaking. And God will do what? And God will speak. So, if God is speaking now, and you want to hear God, fine. But the problem is, when you are expecting God to give you an answer, and what you are expecting, God has already spoken about it. So you wait and wait and say, ah, is God still alive? These Christians and their God, is He still really alive? Maybe He has spoken a long time, but you didn't know. That is why, for me, as a student of the prophetic, I don't joke with writing. I have a diary. I write everything God put, tells me. Because sometimes, as you move on in the journey of life, there comes a time, there are things that confront you, and you realize that God has spoken about it many years ago. And there are things God is also about to say. Some of us, even our grandchildren, God has already talked about it. God can send, give you ideas. God can give you messages about them and tell you what he's about to do with them. Are we together? And that is the speak. So God will do nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So let me just do a simple illustration here. Can we practice seeing and hearing now? <laughs> All right, let me, before that, you know that I'm going to write something here. I need somebody to tell me what I've written here. If you are at the back, how many of you can see what I've written here? What have I written? You can see a dot. Powerful. Malabashaya. What can you see? You can see 18. All right. What can you see? You can see a dot. So somebody is seeing 18. Mark, what, what can you see? Two lines. So somebody sees a dot. Somebody sees 18. Somebody sees two lines. This is how we can see. So God has spoken. Once has God spoken and twice have we heard. So God speaks once, but sometimes our ability to understand what God has said is also another level. So God has spoken. That is why I don't believe in dreams and in their the interpretations that we put in the book. That people say that these are dreams and their interpretation. When you dream and you are holding X, it means that you are going to buy X. <laughs> if you dream and you see yourself working on gold, it means you are going to have money. It's not always like that. So, you are seeing a dot. You are seeing 18. But what I've written here is 15. Okay, now, let me take you to your house. I want you to go to your bedroom. Everybody go to your bedroom now. Are we in our bedroom? Are we already in our bedrooms? Are we in our bedrooms? I want you to go to your bed. You remember your bed. You know your bed sheet. Can you see your bed sheet? Can you see your bed sheet? Can you see your bed sheet? All right. Now, I want you to move from your bedroom and begin to walk. 
walk towards where you usually take your bath, your bathroom. Are you in the bathroom now? If you are in the bathroom, you can see your bathroom now. You can picture it. Powerful. How come that you are right here about less than 700 centimeters away from me? But this thing that is here, you can't see. But how come far away in your house, you can see your bedroom, you can see the color of your bed sheet, you can see your washroom and all that is in your house. How possible it, is it? That you are here with me, you can't see this. But far away, you can see. It tells you that to see into the spirit is not by the physical eye. We don't see into the spirit with the physical eye. We see into the spirit with our spiritual eye. And everybody here has a spiritual eye. It's either your eye is closed or it's open. Now, if you can see, so this is a practical. You are able, this is how we see things. Eh? Don't, it's not so. But the more you use the gift, the more you practice it, the more you meditate, it becomes sharp. The first time I saw an open vision, my God. The Lord just opened my eyes like that, as if I was watching a video and I saw all the things. I was amazed. Oh, this thing called the prophetic. So if you are close and you can't see and you are far, you can't, it means that there is something in you that is the spirit man God has already put inside you. You have the spiritual eye already. Yours, yours is to begin to use it and to operate in it. So you see, I've thought you have to see. Very simple. But you see, there is another dimension of sight where you don't just see things in that dimension. Now you see things visually as on your eyes. That is also another dimension. We call that open vision. And God will open your eyes and you see things alive consciously. You see them. That is also another dimension of sight. So you see. Madaboshaya. You see, it's not easy to teach the prophetic. Because there is no manual for the prophetic. No two prophets are also the same. May somebody catch the prophetic anointing. As a minister, my eyes are open. But we'll get there very soon. We'll get there very soon. I hear a name like J. Everybody say J. Uh -huh. J. I hear a name like J. We'll fish the person out very soon. Look at this. So you go to bed, Laba Shabaya, and you see this image. This is tutorials, eh? <laughs> God shows you this. My question to you is, what do you see? So, could you take the mic? As we sit there, tell me what you see. You see a bed here, right?
You see an image. Okay. Can you pass on the microphone? Please tell me what do you see? Whoa. Pass it on to Sheila. Sheila, tell me what do you see? So somebody seen a man, somebody also seen a cartoon. <laughs> All right, that's powerful. You see an image with an inscription on Is that all you see? Okay. All right. So listen. Please give it to my brother. What 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 do you see? All right. Thank you. So now let me do this. One day, I was going to preach in a certain church, Pentecost church somewhere. Um, I mean, I won't mention the place. Somewhere. <laughs> I forgot I'm online. So, before I went, I lied down. And I started praying. I said, God, give me one word. Show me something about the program I'm attending. Then the Lord showed me a vision. Then I saw that I'd gone to the service. When I entered the service, I was ministering to somebody. The person was called, I mean, the person had a sister. And the sister was sick. That was all I saw. Can I teach this? Can I push it? Can I push it? All that I saw was that somebody is in the program whose sister is sick. Now, I, my eyes opened and I started what's happening. I thought that was all. A lot of us, that is our problem. When we see something small, we leave the presence and we go. We leave and we go. Look at Joshua and Moses. Moses will leave the tabernacle. But the guy called Joshua, my God, this guy is so prophetic. He knows how to abide and stay in the presence. He will stay in the presence until God speaks. Today I'm teaching you secrets. Eh? Until God speaks. So I said, okay, let me apply the Joshua principle. Somebody said the Joshua principle. So I said, okay, let me continue to abide in the presence. Then I started, I put the phone aside, put it off. Sometimes you're going to learn how to switch your phone off. Am I talking to somebody here? Sometimes you're going to learn how to put Facebook off, put WhatsApp off, but as you watch, don't put Facebook off. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to learn how to put your WhatsApp off and your Instagram and your Facebook off. And but not for today. Let's finish after that. You can put it off. <laughs> so as I lie down again, now the Lord took me further and I saw myself in a secondary school now. Where the girl schools. And God gave me the name of the house master. And after the name, God said that the guy, the girl should not be allowed to come home. So once I went into the service, I started ministering. And I said, There is somebody here. So you see, are we together? If I had just paused or left at somebody's sister is sick, that would not be enough. Listen, everything God is going to speak to you, he, he is not now manufacturing the word. Come on. Anything God is about to tell you, He is not now manufacturing the word. The words are there already. Forever that word is settled. Forever. It is not tomorrow or yesterday. It is forever. The word is there. The word does not move. As a matter of fact, He created the foundations of the world with the word of His mouth. So, the word of God is static. The word is unchangeable. So, everything God will say. So, the day you hear, that was not the day God spoke to you. The day you heard the word of God was not the first time God spoke to you. The day you heard the word of God was just because you were now in tune with what God has been speaking all the time. 
As we speak, every radio station in Ghana is speaking, is working here in this room. But we, until we tune in and connect, we will not hear them. Amen. So I decided to stay. And God gave me. Now when I went there, I said, there's somebody here. Your sister is very sick. A lot of hands came up. But I had to be specific. And I said, okay, all of you, your hands are up. But one of you, your sister is in the senior high school. Then the hands started dropping. It led to the few. And the few was not enough. I had to still be specific. Somebody said, God is specific. God is specific. And then I said, one of you, your, your sister's house master is called Mr. So-so-and-so. I mentioned the name. Then one person's hand was up. Then I said, look, your sister is sick. Am I correct? He said, yes, my sister. She's even planning to come when the house master does not want her to come. I said, listen, an angel of the Lord has been released into the secondary school. And the angel's assignment is to ensure that your sister does not come home. So the angel is hardening the heart of the house master and telling him that he should not allow the girl to come home because if she comes home, she will die. So resist her and let her stay in school and she will recover and be well. And when I gave the word, the guy was like, the girl has been trying to get exit. She has been refused several times. I said, listen, this is the time God... Let's pause it. Let me come here. So you see, all of you are seeing something here. But is that all you are seeing? Did you see the color of the marker I used? You didn't talk about it. Is that all you saw? You didn't talk about the pinky background. Is that all you saw? There are some lines here. All these circles, these little, little circles, the eyes. The guy has two eyes. He has two ears. All these things, he didn't talk about it. So now, what do you see? I want to ask you again. What are you seeing? So I want you to prophesy to me now. Pick the microphone. Give someone pick the microphone. Now tell me, what do you see? The Lord asked the prophet. He said that, Jeremiah, what do you see? He said, I see an almond tree. Please tell me, Amos, that was Amos, sorry. What do you see? Tell me. So I now, I want you to go into details. This is why it gets to a point where, so you see that you need time. This dimension of the prophetic is the seer dimension. And that seer dimension, if you go to church and we do open prayer worship, Word, word of, uh, prayer after this thing, offering, and we go. You will not really experience this dimension because this dimension really needs time. You need some time, some two hours, to really work this thing out and describe what you are seeing. So please, now tell me what do you see? Now you are the prophet. You are the prophetic vessel. So talk like a prophet. Now tell me what do you see here? I see an image. Malabasha. Two big eyes. Madeboshire. Two big ears. The image is smiling. The image has two hands and two legs. The image is relaxed. And the image is saying, I love God. I love God. I love God. That's what I'm seeing. Wow. Please. Pass it to the next person. Please tell me, what do you see? Hallelujah. <laughs> I see an image that looks like the person is dancing with open legs and open arms. I see the person wants to say something because the mouth is a little bit <laughs> shaky. Uh, shaking or open with the inscription I love God my God <laughs> yeah maybe the last person then I'll move on I see an image on a pink background okay I can actually see a dot by the image powerful I see that the image 
has one eye has two eyes but one is bigger than the other and it has two flappy ears and an inscription saying i love god um that is what i see wow so i want us to just look at i'm, I'm asking the audience watching us what do you also see okay so fifi and Kuma says that to see into the spirit is not by physical eye all right we see it by the okay what do you see okay 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 all right okay the comments are many so i have to jump some <laughs> Okay, so uh, all right, so I think that as and, as and when we move on, we'll pick some comments. Yeah, God, God has spoken, God is speaking, and God will speak. Okay, God bless you, Abigail. And we have Mark. Okay, Mark says that God is specific. <laughs> wow, powerful. This is amazing. So it means that with time, you need time. Tell somebody, all you need is time. Tell someone, all you need is time. You need time to wait in the presence of God. You need time. If only you get time to abide in the presence. We are too busy for God. That is why we can't see and we can't hear. We are too busy. Too busy on our phones. Busy and we are too busy, we can't hear God. So, I mean, all you've said is correct. I see all that. Dot. Somebody didn't mention this one. There's a pin here. A white pin. There's a blue one here. Even though I said, what do you see here? But somebody should not be limited to say, I also see another writing above it. So you are expanding. I see a writing and you can talk about this, you can talk about this. And if you, if you want, you can talk about the meaning you, you know about this and the explanation we've given. You can still go further and talk about the pin, this one, and all, everything you see here. So the question is, what do you see? So I came to challenge you that from today, as you go back, I am releasing you to your next dimension in the prophetic. I said, I am releasing you into the next dimension of the prophetic. Now, anything God has spoken to you about, don't be too quick to jump out of your bed and say, I'm going to work, I'm in a hurry. No! That is why people say, the man of God, I dreamt and I've forgotten my dream. Okay, you can't forget your dream. No, no, the dream is there. You need to go back and pray and seek the face of God. Say, God, this thing you have shown me, take me deeper, take me deeper. You'll be surprised the things God will show you. Amen. Am I teaching? Let me show you six keys to sharpening the prophetic gift. Then I will be maybe rounding up with that. The prophetic. The prophetic. One day I told my brother, I was in a dream. The Lord spoke to me and said, in Accra on the 7th of... Uh, on the 31st of May, it will rain in Accra, getting to the evening. And I called Edmond. I said, Eddie, please watch with me. <laughs> watch with me. Let's observe the day, whether it will rain, as the Lord said. And that was about two days before. And we were just observing. I was looking, looking. looking. The secret to being sharp is to look. Keep on looking. So I started looking, watching, and seeing into it. Then lo and behold, that, that it rained. Eh? <laughs> oh my God. So if God can talk about football match scores, if God can talk about rain, your life is more valuable than rain and football scores. Why wouldn't God now talk to us about what he's about to use you for? No, our problem is that I wish next week we will we'll, we'll do a special series episode on how to hear from God or how to hear God's voice. That one we dedicate it. We do practicals how to hear God's voice. Because a lot of churches don't teach it. So people are running from place to place. They can't hear God from themselves. Abide in the presence. Stay in the presence. That is the secret. 
And when you see it, don't run away. Keep on seeing it. Keep on seeing it. Keep on looking and looking and looking and looking until you get the bigger picture that God wants to show you. My God. Did you feel what I feel? Did somebody tap me right now? I just felt a tap on my shoulder. I just checked to see if somebody is standing here. Did you see that? Or you didn't see it? I checked to see if somebody is here. There is an angel in the house. The spirit of God is in the house. My God. We will get there. But let me show you six secrets to sharpening the prophetic gift. The word is prophetic gift. What is the prophetic gift? Because if you don't know what the gift is, how can you even sharpen it? <laughs> if I teach you how to sharpen it, you don't know what you are even sharpening. It's a waste of time. What is the prophetic gift? The prophetic gift is the gift of the prophetic vessel. Simple as that. It is that gift which enables the prophetic vessels to see into the past, see into the now, and see into the future. And what is gift, this gift? When you read 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about the gift of prophecy, the gift of word of wisdom. Prophecy is just speaking the mind or the counsel of God. There are many definitions to that, but that is it. Word of wisdom is the ability God gives a man to see into the future. So whether you hear or you see it, it's, it has, the message has to do with the future. So it's just a channel. Now we have word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is the ability to see into the past and the present. So the channel will now take you into yesterday and will take you into today. So for example, yesterday, Mark, maybe yesterday you were in town, you were driving a car and you bump into a man and the man is as if you know the man from somewhere and you were asking, so I'm, I've moved you from, you are here, but I've moved you to yesterday. That is the operation of the word of knowledge. And the word of knowledge also has to do with the now. These are the gifts of the prophet, what we call the prophetic gifts. Then we also have what we call descending of spirits. This is when a man receives an authority to see the operations of certain spirit behind certain situations and people and circumstances. And you receive the authority not to only just to see, but to deal with the situation. So Paul will walk around and we see a young woman say, these are the men of God. And Paul will say, hey, even though what she was saying was true, but he had the authority to rebuke the spirit by the descendant of spirits and cast it out. Are we together? So this combination of gifts is what we call the prophetic gifts. It can come through dreams, visions, whichever form. But at the end of the day, the message has to do with either the yesterday, the today, or the tomorrow. How do you sharpen it? Number one, you can sharpen your prophetic gift because there are many of us, you say that me, every time I dream, it comes to pass. Have, have you heard that before? Have you heard that before? There are people who also say that anytime I see something bad, it comes to pass. Hey, this one. I, in fact, I've been thinking, why is it that they only see bad things? I've been wondering. But there are people like that. How do you sharpen? Number one, you have to sit under mentorship. You need mentorship. So take, it, take note of that. You need mentorship. You need to get a mentor. The problem with mentorship is that sometimes people become relaxed at a point. Elisha had Elijah. And Elijah said, sit here, don't move. I'm going to meet the Lord somewhere. But Elisha kept on following until he got a mantle. So you need somebody who will train you. Eli or Eli was the mentor for Samuel. The first time Samuel heard the voice of God, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. Someone went to Eli and said, you are talking to me, you are calling me. He said, no. When you hear the voice, say, the master speak, thy servant hear. So it was Eli who trained. And listen, Eli was not a prophet. He was a priest. So mentorship does not necessarily mean that you need a prophet to mentor you. An elder can mentor you. A pastor can mentor you. A prophet can mentor you. And they can mentor you in the prophetic gift. All you need is a matured mentor to mentor you. Amen. Can I continue? Number two, you need 
what I call the key. These are six keys. Eh? The second key is the key of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The key of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is my romantic partner. <laughs> my father would say, I romance the Holy Spirit. <laughs> In fact, we have intercourse. We have so much intimacy. We, there is no gap oh, between me and the Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Spirit. And I believe you do. You need, if you want to sharpen your prophetic gift, you need to have a strong fellowship with the Holy Spirit. A strong one. Amen. Number three, because of time, I would just want to be quick about it. You need the key of placing value on the prophetic gift. Place value. The Bible says that despise not prophecies. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. You need to place value on the gift. When you place value on it, you will not allow people's opinions to tell you what you have to do. Place value on it. When you place value on it, no matter the situation, it is what God has said that matters. Are there some people here who are ready to place value on their gifts and their callings? Number four key is the key of prayer and fasting. The key of prayer and fasting. The key of prayer and fasting. Somebody say fasting. I'm not talking about two days fasting. If you want to go deep, eh, you have to do long fasting. Amen. Some people may not teach you, but I mean, when you are doing a church leader, you are doing a, it's not wise to say 40 days fasting. I mean, okay, let me change my word. It's not really appropriate to say we are doing 40 days fasting. Um, let me borrow my words carefully. Let me say that long fasting is very good. I have done 10 days fasting, 21 days, 30 days. I've not tried 40 days yet. But one day I may do. So at least I've done 30 days fasting. No food. And it's just water. People say that Jesus fasted 40 days, 40 nights. And people do that without water. It is, it is ignorance. The Bible says that when he had finished, listen to this, he went hungry. He didn't say he went hungry and thirsty. That sh it should tell you that the fact that the Bible didn't say he, Jesus was thirsty, it means that he was drinking water. Because the Bible doesn't hide anything there. Where Jesus was thirsty, and, and Jesus was thirsty, is it not in the Bible? Ah, even when Jesus cried, didn't yeah, so, so so the Bible doesn't hide anything. So when you go on long fasting, you drink water. It's very important. Number five key is the key of holiness and purity. Blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. Number six key is the key of association. Association. If you look at the Old Testament very well, you realize that a lot of times, any times prophets were seen, they were moving in companies. The company of prophets. But I don't understand why the sons of the prophets, they, they didn't catch Elijah's mantle. Sometimes when I think about it, I don't understand. But it's not like the guys didn't see you. They saw that Elijah would be taken away. Or it's not in the Bible. They saw it. If, in fact, apart from the year and the month and the week, they even saw the day. So they were telling Elijah, do you know that your master will be taken away from you today? So they saw the exact day. But these guys were so, well, even when you read, I think before they got to Jordan, they even went to start afar off and they were looking at what will happen. You see, when you associate with somebody, there is something on the person that comes upon you. I always say this, a vulture will never fly with an eagle. A tortoise will never run with a horse. But the day 
A Frenchman decides to work with a German person. The person will learn at least one German vocabulary. When you work with me, you will learn at least one French word. At least you will learn something about the prophetic. Because all I will say, all we talk about, 80% we're talking about prophet and prophecy and prophetic and all that and ministry. Ah. If you talk with, if you associate with a banker, you talk about banking things. So, as I conclude, the key to sharpening your prophetic gift is the key of association. If you want to be sharp, work with sharp people. If you want to be dumb, work with dumb men. You'll be dumb. In fact, you don't need to struggle. The Bible says that by your company, we can tell your character. Is it not true? Yeah. So when you associate, it releases an impartation. Association precedes impartation. And I pray that you will walk under this prophetic anointing. I don't know whether we have some questions or comments from Facebook. Let's take them and then we close. Do you have any question for me? Anybody here with any question? Or being asked a question? When, when you were asking of what we see on the board, you, you preferred that we went into details and we gave particular things we saw and even expanded. In, in my opinion, um, I think generally we perceive that when a prophet begins to speak a lot of things, it is, um, it is gimmicks or it is, it is skills or you know, to show um, a lot of things he has seen. Uh, but I realize that you prefer that we went deep and said a lot of things we saw. Um, what, w- w- why is it important for the prophet to, to be detailed? Why is it important for the prophet to look and look very well and see and see deeper things or more things about what he's seen? Okay. It's a very good question. You see in the Bible, when God called Moses, God did not just call Moses and say, Moses, go and deliver my people. But first of all, God said, Moses, remove your sandals. And he did. This is nowhere part of the assignment is it part? Oh, I'm asking you, is it part? What has removing of your shoes <laughs> got to do with going to deliver people? In fact, if you're going to deliver, people, it's about fighting, and you even need your shoes to walk. Is it not true? And look at the burning bush. How why should God talk about the bush that is on fire? But you see, these things releases faith. So sometimes when the people are listening to the word, you are ministering to them, sometimes they need their faith to be lifted so they will believe the word you are giving them. That is why sometimes God gives those details. But those things are just the icing. The real prophecy is not the names we mention or the telephone numbers we give. The real prophecy is the message behind those things. Those things are just... Uh, so if you are not mentioning telephone number, don't, be, don't think that you are, you are, you are dead. No. But when you also do that, it's very powerful. <laughs> because it releases the faith of the people to believe the word. Where is Eunice? Let, let her come and sit down. Let me minister to her. Push it. Push it. Do you have any question? As somebody calls her, do you have any question? Malabaya. Can you check Facebook whether there are some comments there and read for us and let's see. Ma, ma, ma. Please go back and see. Go back and hear. As after we leave this place, I want you to go back and see. Go back and hear. Are there any comments on Facebook? Ma, 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 la, ma. Robert, Kwaju Asamwa. Robert says what? When you associate with somebody, uh-huh. there is something on that person that comes on you. Okay. Then Mark is saying that if you want to be sharp, work with sharp people. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Duncan Wood is saying, 
mentorship, fasting and prayers, holiness, association, okay. placing value on the prophetic, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. So please, um, I think if there's no question, then it should be fine. Amen. I want us to engage in just two minutes impartation. Everybody here, even the cameraman, you are shooting me, but impartation is coming to you. You receive camera, you, you will receive camera eyes. Prophetic camera eyes. Are we together? Yes. You will not just be snapping photos. Mm. Listen, the easiest way for you to prophesy is, is to push, put yourself into the profession you are doing. Mm. The profession you are doing is just like prophesying. Mm. Because I speak into your ears and I say, say it. If I tell you Kojo, you also say Kojo. Yes. What you see is what we capture. You know be so. You know be so. What you see is what you do what? You capture. So as you are capturing me, I pray that God will give you that prophetic eyes. Anyone watching, may God give you that prophetic eyes. Amen. And as you listen to me, receive an anointing. Not only to receive prophecy, but for you yourself to be a prophet on your own. Amen. Go back there and begin to take over your, your generation, take over your industry. In the banking sector, in the aerospace sector, in the financial sector, in the Amen. politicians sector, politics and all that. We need the prophetic people. Amen. Listen, you don't need to be in the office of the prophet before you prophesy. You can walk in that anointing. Everybody begin to speak in tongues wherever oh, you are. Ma la ba ba. There's a question. Yes, bro. Okay, let's take the question. Um, it's coming from Emmanuel Ofori Enim. And he's asking. Ah, Emmanuel Ofori Enim. Yes. Is it not my friend here? <laughs> ah, okay, okay. What, what is he saying? Does having visions and hearing God qualifies you to be a prophet? No. That does not qualify you to be a prophet. In fact... The fact that you prophesy does not mean you're a prophet. Mm. It is like when I finished my, when I went to do national service, I had the opportunity to teach. In a lot, of, I taught primary four, primary six, JSS, but it doesn't mean that I was a prophet. I was a teacher. Yes. <laughs> no. So you are only demonstrate. That's why I'm saying that it, when Joel chapter two twenty eight prophesied that in the last days I'll pour out my spirit, he didn't say it will the spirit will be poured on only prophets. He said mm. all flesh. Mm. So everybody, every Christian, and in Acts chapter two, before they even spoke in tongues, they saw and they heard. Yes, I've told you that before. So you don't need to be a prophet before you see or you hear. You can be a teacher, a lecturer. Those days when I was in PUC, Pentecost University, I had a study group. And everybody in HR wanted to join my group because I will see the questions before we go to the exams room. Yeah. One to six. Eunice, it was not easy. That was divine apple. <laughs> apple cron cron. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, question, Sheila. Yeah, so I want to know if it's proper to question a prophet. So, for instance, you know, for the mere man, once you receive something from God, we wouldn't have the interpretation. We will probably see it as a little off. But sometimes you wouldn't be able to really tell if this is right or wrong. So, as a prophet, is it good, for instance, if you give me a prophecy, do I, is it proper to question it and say, no, I think this is not the exact or true? It I go? is correct. Mm. It is, the Bible says, judge all prophecies. Test all spirits. Yes. Listen, God spoke. God is speaking. God will speak. God spoke is the word that we have, the Bible. The Bible is the word God has spoken. And if you want to judge what God is speaking, you judge what God is speaking by what God spoke. Mm. It's a word. Push it. Push it. <laughs> Do you get it? Yes. Including all that God will speak, you judge everything by the written word. Mm. So when you don't go stick to the word, you'll be thrown, everybody, anybody can receive it. In fact, somebody will tell you that, should I say this one? Yes. Should I go there? Yes. <laughs> should I go there? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> somebody will say that, you know, when Jesus was healing the, the blind people, he put his, uh, his hand on their eyes and touched their eyes and said, be healed, and they were healed. So somebody said that, you, because you need a baby, 
you know, I have to do the thing with you, you know, so that you can have a baby. Or people do that. Is that not so? Yes. So, but you only judge. In fact, if I minister to you, I'm expecting you to judge the prophecy. Yes, judge the prophecy. And when you're judging the prophecy, you do it by the word. And in the word, you look at the person's, I mean, there's a lot of things. You look at the person's integrity, you look at the person's, uh, even sometimes, sometimes marital life. Sometimes, marital life. You look at the person's, a lot of things. But it should be by the word. Yes. Um, prof, a question from Emmanuel Salifu. He's asking, what makes a person realize his call as a prophet? All right. To be called as a prophet is not by prayer. You don't pray that God make me a prophet. No. You don't wish to be a prophet. You don't desire to be a prophet. It is a sovereign call. I decide to say, hey, read the question for me. Until I've called you, you don't read. Or you don't bring yourself. I'll sack you. <laughs> so God, by his sovereignty, says that you, I'm calling you. Come as a prophet. And he can call you even before you are formed in the womb. He can call you when you are young. He can call you as an adult. So Jeremiah was called before he was formed in the mother's womb. And he didn't even realize his calling until he grew to a point. Someone was called as a young guy. Now, if you look at Amos, Amos was even a businessman when God called him. Are we together? Yes, bro. And Ezekiel was at the age of 33. He, he was by the brook, at the rivers, when the Lord called him. So, to be, to be called as a, it's God's sovereignty, he calls anybody at any time. But when you begin to manifest the prophetic gift, it could be a sign that you have a prophetic calling. But it, that alone... It's a clue. It's just a clue. That alone in its entirety does not mean that you are called as a prophet. Okay. Um, there is um, a question from Duncan Wood. And he's asking, how do you know you are a prophet and called into that office predestined by God? When, as, let me say this. I am not a prophet. In fact, everybody says I'm a prophet. But I'm not a prophet because God has not told me yet I'm a prophet. Let me put it this way. You see, I talked about Nabi and Kose. Yes. So, we hear, we see, we prophesy. But there's another dimension we call the office of the prophet. At the office of the prophet, God will now give you a certain leadership role in the church, in the body of Christ. Okay? And you begin to do certain things. Number two, God will confirm to you that you are in the office even before the church confirms. So, there are people, a lot of people there, a lot of pastors, a lot of, I mean, when I say pastors, I don't mean my church. All other denominations. There are a lot of men of God who are already pastors, okay? They are pastors, but they are in the office of the prophet. Only that they've not been ordained outwardly as such. Okay? And to be, to be in the office does not mean it should take you 20 years or 30 years. It's up to, it's up to God. Yeah. And Prof, um, the last question is coming from... How many minutes do we have more? Yeah. The, 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 okay. the last one. Um, it's coming from Mr. Martinson Yebois. And he's asking... How do one differentiate between a fake prophecy and a real one? Wow. There are three sources of prophecy. Prophecy, prophecy can either come from the spirit of God or come from the human spirit or come from the devil. But the authenticity of a prophetic word is not in the accuracy of the prophetic word. Mm, appreciate. So, the fact that I tell you your name is Marco Poku does not mean that I am from God. You need to see behind or beyond Marco Poku and see, test the source, whether this one is from God or not. Sometimes, too, it's not from God, it's from the human spirit. The person himself has generated it. So, to, to know a false prophecy and a genuine one, you should look at the source. <laughs> yeah. 
you chop satia, you chop banku, you can't talk say ah, uh, they see say they chop banku. No, no, no. I say that one, you don't be like that. Too. <laughs> yes. Any question? I think is the last one. That's the last yeah, one. That's the last one. Wow. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, just. Okay. All right. So I want us to do just a short session. I want us to begin to speak in tongues and pray that this anointing will come upon you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but I feel the presence in this place. Hallelujah. Le paro kada ba 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 roko to li kada ba li e kada ba ha raka ta ba ra ba 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 ra kada ba li ya kala ba la ba ha le ba ra kada ba ha kala ba shaya kada ba ha Holy Spirit Holy Spirit Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Hallelujah, Holy Upon you, may you receive your peace. May you receive I minister to you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, even be released upon your life. Holy Spirit. Ah. Can I minister to somebody? Can I do example? <laughs> so, Spirit. I called Eunice because today is Eunice's day. Amen. Amen. Eunice. Holy Spirit. The Lord has opened my eyes. I have been taken to a certain year. Now, when I entered the year, I entered to, into January and I went down to February and I went down into March. Now, when I went into March, I stopped a little, but I realized that I have to move on. So I see myself continuing the journey in the year. And I see that I've entered into April. When I entered into April, I thought I would end into May. But the Lord said that this is the end of the journey. There is something about you and April. There is something about you and the month of April. About three months ago, three months ago is which month? April, am I right? We are in June. April, May, June. How many months ago did I say? Three months. 
So just three months, in the, in the month of April, I saw that something happened. A group of people had gathered and there was this discussion ongoing. And I saw that they had said a certain prayer concerning your life. And some of the words they spoke concerning your life, it looks like a birthday celebration. Were you born in the month of April? You were born in the month of April. Powerful. So I, I saw that a certain prayer was offered for you. And that prayer has done a lot of things in the spirit. And this thing has not only worked for you, but even for your husband and for your children. In fact, I know that you were my schoolmates. That one, we all know. But I don't know your children. But I'm seeing... You have two children? Two children. My God. One boy, one girl. <laughs> Tell me. Who is called J? He's what? Jasper. And you call him J? You know when I was ministering, I said, who is called Jay? And I said, we'll fish the person out. Oh, okay. So, Jay is the son. Wow. This is amazing. It has gotten me off my seat. <laughs> wow. Listen. The prayers that were offered for you, they not only affect you, but it also affected your husband and your children. And as a matter of fact, Jay will become a very great person in the history of Africa. When we talk about people who have been called by God, anointed by God, to stand in the place of power and influence, his name shall be mentioned. For I saw that somebody said a prayer and said that anybody who comes out of your seat should be blessed. And that prayer has affected Jay. But if you know anybody called Akosia, eh? who is called Akosia? Hey! Akosia is your daughter. Have you spoken to me about her? Have you to maybe you, you Ima, before you come to the program? My daughter's name is called Akosia, so maybe you told me that. I don't even know them. I've not seen them. Are they here? Can you bring them to me? Kabalaba Shabalaba. Clap your hands onto Jesus, my God. I feel that mountain here. I feel that mountain here. I feel that mountain here. I feel the presence. We're gonna worship the Lord wherever you are. Madaba Shele Honda. Makati Bidi so Terribionde. Oh, Hallelujah, Oh, Mama, 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 If you are watching us, the same anointing is coming up on you wherever you are. It doesn't matter whether you are driving, whether you are in the kitchen, whether you are in the hall or in the house. I see that same oil coming up on me. Maya. Jay, how are you? You are fine? Oh, so beautiful. Jay is shy, eh? I want you to stretch your hands towards them. That may the anointing of God be released. Kaba. Father, I release your people into the next level. Let every word you have said concerning them come to pass. Let every word you have said concerning them be fulfilled. 
take them to the next level take them to the next dimension in jesus mighty name amen jay i love you okay you are my friend are you not my friend give me five. Oh, don't do that akosia oh charlie i'm shocked though <laughs> oh awesome all right so Eunice, we'll talk more okay there are a lot of things i can't say over the camera so I'll tell you a lot of things behind there. She's my friend, Akosia. You don't want to go, eh? <laughs> All right. So as I end, if you don't know Jesus, wherever you are, I want you to say these words after me. Because this is the food for the children. Say, dear Lord, I believe I'm a sinner. You came to die for my sins. And for my justification... You resurrected from the dead. I believe in you. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me. Write my name in the book of life. I will worship you, serve you all the days of my life. So help me God. If you said this prayer wherever you are, I want you to know that you are saved. And today there is joy in heaven. Amen. Alright, so next week, by the grace of God, we will do healing room. And I want you to stay tuned. I believe you are blessed watching. If you want to send any message, you can still do so or send a personal message. You are welcome to do so. God bless you. And the next time I see you, you'll be at the top. God bless you. There is a balm that can heal every facet of life. Reveal God's mind concerning your life. A balm for the hopeless, fatherless, defenseless, and the afflicted. A healing balm from Healing Room. A time of teaching, prophetic, and healing every sick part of life. Healing Room, on air and online, coming soon. came to me and said, man of God, I need your direction for where I'm supposed to be in terms of my political ambition. God visited him and today he's one of the great people in our land. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why are my people still not well? A young lady who had an issue with the heart came to me and said, man of God, I need healing for my heart. By the grace of God, even though doctors had recommended surgery, God touched her and today she is well. By his stripes, we are already healed. How then are we able to tap into the healing that God has already given unto us? In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that God also give gifts of healing to his people. So there is gifts, not gifts as in singular, it is plural, indicating that God has different kinds of healing for his people. Healing room is not just about physical healing, but it's about spiritual healing, emotional healing, relationship healing, marriage healing, political healing, leadership healing, business healing, anything you can think about. I want you, especially you, to join me this and every week for Healing Room TV coming your way and I believe that God will surely bless you. There is a balm for you and make sure you don't miss this balm.